Welcome to Pawpaw TV. Today we present an original program, One on One with Jerry McLaughlin. He discusses his life's work with Richard Lund. Today's program is brought to you by Gojis.com. Gojis.com. Your eyes will love you. This material is for educational purposes only. If you are sick, see a doctor. Maybe you can find one that speaks herbal medicine. And now, one on one with Jerry McLaughlin. So, uh, can you explain a little bit about the activity of the acetogenins in the cell? And what actually right. happens? Well, they're the most powerful inhibitors known of the mitochondria in cells. And the mitochondria are the, are the cell's power plant. Mm -hmm. It's where the cell will take the glucose and metabolize it down to carbon dioxide, burns it up. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in that process, there are hydrogens that are given off protons, and these protons are linked up to oxygen to make water, so carbon dioxide and water are the end products of burning up glucose. Mm -hmm. That happens in the mitochondria. The byproduct of that is chemical energy. And that chemical energy is in the form of a compound called ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. And ATP, then, is the purpose that we have for burning up you know, uh, chemicals or like glucose, mm -hmm. and we end up then getting this chemical energy. Well, the mitochondria have five complexes that they pass these protons down. It's called the electron transport chain, and it turns out that the papa compounds are the most potent inhibitors of complex one of those complexes that we've seen. And well, we knew that it was working in complex one from work that I done with Dr. Uh, Hollingworth at Michigan State University and Dr. Thor Arneson at the uh, University of Ottawa. We didn't know exactly where, but Dr. John Casita at Berkeley, at the University of California, Berkeley, has published a paper back in 1999 in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which is you know, a very prestigious uh, scientific journal, using gelatin, which is one of the pawpaw compounds that I supplied them. He found that it works in the PSST protein subunit of complex one. It's a 23 kilodalton protein in complex one of the mitochondria, so we know right where it works there. And Dr. Murray at Purdue has been studying uh, another enzyme that's called the NADH oxidase, which comes along in cancer cells and helps cancer cells to grow without oxygen, so they don't have to use their mitochondria, but still can make its ATP compound. And the cells do that by just taking glucose down to a three-carbon compound called pyruvate. And when that happens, then ATP is produced, but you have to regenerate the uh, compound called NADH, and you make it back to NAD. Mm -hmm. And that's done with this NADH oxidase. And when that happens, then the cells can grow anaerobically. So I think a lot of cancer grows without oxygen. Mm -hmm. And people get all stirred up about trying to inhibit new blood vessel formation, but I think that that isn't going to do much to control cancer. Mm -hmm. So uh, it has two functions as far as inhibiting energy production. Right. It it inhibits the energy production in the intermembrane, uh, the mitochondria, the oxidative uh, phosphorylation process, and then it also inhibits in the anaerobic. Uh, formation. Of right, and that enzyme is in the cell membrane of cancer cells. Okay. And what did you discover about that, uh, the, the multiple drug-resistant cells? Ah, well, we didn't do the, the basic biology of the multiple drug resistance, but we now know that multiple drug resistance is due to a pump that develops in the membrane of the cancer cell. And that in time, the cells are selected that have this pump. And the pump is an efflux pump. It pumps out. So if an ad a drug like adromycin goes into the cancer cell, it gets pumped out mm -hmm. before it can go to the nucleus of the cell and kill the cell. And if bleomycin goes in, it gets pumped out. If vincristine goes in, it goes in and gets pumped out. Taxol gets pumped out. Mm -hmm. And so this is called the multi-drug resistant pump because it pumps out all these different drugs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And after a while, then, the cancer is refractory to anything you treat it with. Mm -hmm. 
and that's why people die. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Something has to drive the pump, and that's energy. So it's this chemical energy compound that we've created in the mitochondria or in the cell membrane, this ATP molecule. Mm -hmm. So it turns out that there are two ATP binding sites on the inside of the cell membrane. And these ATP binding sites bind ATP, it gets cleaved to ADP or adenosine diphosphate and a phosphate, and that gives chemical energy which <laughs> drives this pump mm -hmm. and it pumps out <laughs> the adromycin or the other drug that mm -hmm. you would give. And when that happens then this the the uh, the, the drug cannot accumulate in the cancer cell. But w with the pawpaw compounds present, we inhibit the ATP production, right? Mm -hmm. And without ATP, then the pump cannot run, and the drugs accumulate in the cancer cell and can restore their effectiveness, you know. And this has been recently demonstrated in China, actually a publication came out where they studied the, the drug accumulation in the drug-resistant cells mm -hmm. in the presence of the pawpaw compounds. is one of my, which is one of my compounds. Where, where was that done? Though? What part of China did you? It was done, I think, in Shanghai. Okay. Uh, there's a group there that actually they've picked up this work, and then there's a number of groups in China and Taiwan that have been working on these compounds. And in the absence of much interest in the United States and in botanical products, we have the acetogenins having activity, reducing energy, and Causing a special activity on this pump at the end of the membrane right. of the cell, but why doesn't that hurt the other cells since it's going to cut the energy production? Ah, uh, I didn't understand. I, that's a very good question. It's a question that I that I asked myself for a long time, up until about four years ago, and then I heard the answer from Dr. Stephen Ayer, who's one, been one of the major proponents of insulin potentiated chemotherapy. And so he studied the energetics of cells. And it turns out that like breast cancer cells have seven times more insulin receptors than a normal breast cell. And furthermore, they have 10 times more insulin-like growth factor receptors than a normal breast cell. Mm -hmm. And the insulin-like growth factors and in insulin itself are responsible for opening the door for insulin penetration into cells. Mm -hmm. So this means that the cancer cell takes up 17 times more glucose than a normal cell, mm -hmm. which means that their mitochondria are running 17 times faster, right? Yes. Otherwise, the glucose isn't going to accumulate, it's going to be metabolized. Mm -hmm. And this is because the cancer wants to grow very quickly. Mm -hmm. It wants to, it's so voracious, you know, compared to normal cells. It's like a, a parasite growing among the normal cells. And so it saps all the energy, it grabs all the glucose and it grows. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's this differential in between the normal cell and the cancer cell, and we could say there's a therapeutic index of 17 now between normal cells and cancer cells. And we go in there and inhibit the cancer cell from metabolizing. And actually, almost everybody who takes the pawpaw product says that they feel more energy now. Mm -hmm. And it's because their cancer isn't getting the glucose from the blood. and mm -hmm. the, the the blood glucose stays high and their normal cells can get the energy and they, they feel more energy. 